Um, and with that, um, I guess we'll jump into some opening remarks. So I'd like to introduce uh, John Heschler, the director of the OGS, Ontario Geological Survey. And I'd like to also introduce Don Ford of the Toronto and Region uh, Conservation Authority for uh, today's opening remarks. Go ahead, John. Good morning and welcome to day one of the uh, 2024 Groundwater Open House here in Waterloo. For those of you who don't know me yet, uh, I'm John Heschler, uh, and this marks my first time participating as the new director of the Ontario Geological Survey uh, in this event. It's fantastic to see so many familiar and new faces here in the crowd. I'd like to open today with a land acknowledgement. The Tri-Cities and surrounding regions are some of the most densely populated areas in what we now call Canada. This, that is no surprise. In this geographical area, we have rich farmland supported by minerals from the escarpment. We have relatively moderate climate, abundant freshwater, and all that goes along with that. Recreation, food, water supplies, and energy. Our diverse plant and animal population supports and sustains human life. We have unique, beautiful physical features to enjoy in various ways. The area has been home to numerous Indigenous peoples since time immemorial, and they lived, worked, played, and cared for the land in ways that honoured the Earth's cycles. We are on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee, a group of Indigenous people that include the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, the Kea, the Seneca, and the Tuscarora. The Haudenosaunee formed the largest standing participatory government on Earth, Six Nations Confederacy, over 500 years ago. It is still in place today and is centered around the ideals of equal participation by all nations and genders without discrimination. They believe proper governance is effective only when all voices can be heard and considered. The United States Confederacy was in part modeled on the Six Nations Confederacy. Today, the Six Nations of the Grand River still honor their confederacy and uphold those ideals. They still care for the land that supported them, their ancestors and settlers for all these years. I wish to honor their ability to create systems of governance that are models of democratic societies. I want to thank them and keep their commitment and dedication to the land and supports all in this area. The Anishinaabe also inhabited this area, the Mississaugas of the Credit, and we are on their traditional lands today. The Anishinaabe played an essential role in the survival and success of settlers to Canada. Known for their navigation, tracking, and hunting skills, they were critical to Canada's participation in the First and Second World War. I want to thank them for their generosity and sharing their skills for a cause that shaped the world as we know it now. These skills and community values, uh, which included sharing, generosity, kindness, and openness, allowed early settlers to learn about the area, survive, and eventually thrive in this region. The cities of Kitchener and Waterloo belong to the Between the Lakes Treaty No. 3. The treaty was signed in 1782 on December 7th, nearly 240 years ago. This treaty covers over 3 million acres of land, and the intention was to allow for coexistence of Indigenous and settler groups on this land forever. Treaty 3 includes the cities of Kitchener, Guelph, Hamilton, Burlington, London, St. Catharines, Woodstock, Grimsby, and others. And all residents of these 3 million acres are between the lakes Treaty 3 people. I encourage everyone to read up on this treaty that we are all bound to if we live in this area. Of equal importance to the Mississauga of the Credit, who are the signatories of the treaty, is the covenant known as the dish with one spoon. This covenant has been law in Indigenous communities in the area since the 12th century. It refers to the idea that all people in a given territory must share their resources. Because of this, no one group or person should take more than their fair share. We are all being sustained by one dish and therefore should use one spoon to eat with that dish and allow others the same opportunity and respect. This law also attempts to ensure adequate resources for many generations into the future. This covenant covers modern-day Ontario, Quebec, and New York. 
It is often closely asso associated with the Great Peace Treaty, signed in Montreal by Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee nations in Montreal in 1701. A wampum was made to commemorate this law, and again, I encourage everyone to learn about this. To conclude this part, I want to acknowledge that we are in the lands owned by the Mississauga of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, and six nations of the Grand River, the Haudenosaunee, and thank them for allowing us the space in this land and for all their ancestors did to ensure peaceful habitation and survival of settlers. I want to remind that we are all treaty people and must adhere to the laws laid out in these treaties. Colonization has been to the settlers' advantage and to the disadvantage of Indigenous people in Ontario. I encourage everyone to learn about the history of Indigenous peoples in this area and harm that colonization has had and still does have on these Indigenous groups and to spend some time learning about the treaties of the land. Land acknowledgements are a small part of reconciliation and work needs to be done by all of us to create a path forward that honors the dish with one spoon. With that, I would like to extend my thanks to all of you gathering here in person today to joining us and those joining us online. The demand for this event has been outstanding. With over 680 registered attendees, this is an amazing turnout. Believe it or not, this is our first gathering since 2020. Last year's attempt, as many of you will remember, uh, was an attempt at a hybrid model, uh, was a bit derailed by that unexpected ice storm that hit us uh, on that particular day, forcing us to pivot and have an all virtual event on the fly, which turned out to be a great success, all things considered. While the virtual format has proven successful, there's something special about gathering in person. Those impromptu conversations, those collaborative discussions during breaks, with these are invaluable and cannot be easily facilitated in a virtual setting, not of this size. So I encourage each of you to make the most of this opportunity, engage one another, ask questions, and build connections. The purpose of this open house is to promote groundwater and planning geoscience activities across Ontario, connecting groundwater practitioners with policymakers. The knowledge shared here will continue to support sustainable resource development in our province. Aligning with this purpose, today's agenda is packed with technical talks about the advancement in groundwater geoscience, covering geological characterization, water quality and stewardship, geothermal and water quantity. I'm also looking forward to the session and panel discussion about contaminants, led by my co-presenter, Don Ward, uh, whom you will be hearing shortly. Our poster presentation showcases are the outstanding work of our student, passionate students. Please take the time to explore and inquire about their studies. And don't miss the various demonstration tables that are all around uh, this outside of this room. Folks have been working very hard to put together some exciting databases and some 3D models for you to explore. Finally, I want to express my gratitude and congratulate the Open House organization team, our speakers, poster presenters, and everyone involved in contributing to the technical program for their time, efforts, and commitment to making this event a success. Special appreciation goes to our event producer today, Rob Irwin, and to the team here at the Federation Hall for taking such great care of us here today in Waterloo. And finally, many thanks to the OGS Publication Services Unit for preparing and printing all of our abstracts and abstract volumes. In closing, I invite you to connect with me here today or to reach out by email to, to discuss OGS data, products, and opportunities for collaboration. Please don't be shy. Let's make the most of this gathering. Your active participation can, uh, will contribute to the continued success of this event. Thank you. And with that, I'll turn it over to Don. Thank you, John. First of all, on behalf of the Conservation Authority geoscientists, I would like to welcome all of you and thank you for taking time out of your crazy schedules to spend a day with us here at Waterloo. I would also like to thank both the Ontario Geological Survey and the Canadian Geological Survey for pulling everything together 
and making this event happen year after year. I have participated in this event since 2018 and interest has continued to grow. I am pleased that so many professionals have come to value this opportunity to come together, to network, learn a little bit about what other geoscientists are studying across Ontario. Each year, we strive to introduce you to some new projects, new ideas, new people. This year is no different. Over the day and a half of talks, we have a wide range of topics from geophysics to limnology, geothermal energy, geochemistry, stratigraphy, numerical modeling, and more. It is said that you should never be the smartest person in the room. Thankfully, that's never been a problem for me at this event. <laughs> Once again, I look forward to an open panel discussion. This year, it is on the impacts and mitigation of road salt on our natural environment. Be ready to engage our experts with your questions. So for the next few hours, enjoy the presentations and don't forget to take some time to meet other geoscientists during the breaks and talk with our poster presenters around the room. Thank you. Thank you.